Hi, Kelly Eckhold here to update you on the key events of the week. So this week was very much Central Bank Week, where we got important updates from the Federal Reserve, the Bank of Japan and the Reserve Bank of Australia about the future trend for global interest rates. The two big highlights there came from the Bank of Japan, who finally got their policy rate out of negative territory, and from the Federal Reserve, who confirmed that they're still looking at cutting rates at some stage over this year. The Bank of Japan outcome was particularly momentous, as this was their first tightening in monetary policy in 17 years. And that really reflects that the Japanese have become more confident that inflation can remain up around 2% and that wage growth is on a positive, sustainable trend. The Federal Reserve had been quite closely watched because there were some concerns that they might be looking to peg back the amount of interest rate cuts that they might deliver this year. But as it turned out, those concerns were misplaced, although the Federal Reserve did highlight some upside risks of the inflation outlook, which means that they're going to have to revisit this issue again in June before they start cutting interest rates. Domestically, the big event was the release of Q4 GDP data which was a bit weaker than expected, coming in at minus 0.1% for the quarter and minus 0.3% for the year. That means that 2023 was a year bookended by recessions. Although, to be fair, some of the more recent data looks a little bit more positive, so that suggests that we think that GDP will be growing as we go through 2024. Nevertheless, that weaker GDP data will be comforting for the Reserve Bank as they're thinking about that inflation outlook, although we think there's a bit more water to go under the bridge yet before we start having interest rate cuts come on the agenda. I'll be back to update you again next week.